Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our channel. I'm your host, Horror Haunts, and today we have a special treat for you. Get ready for a spine-tingling journey into the realm of the unknown as we bring you the top 5 stories that will leave you on the edge of your seat. From unexplained encounters to mysterious intruders, we'll delve into the depths of these chilling tales. Brace yourselves for heart-pounding suspense and bone-chilling twists as we explore the enigmatic and eerie events that unfolded in these haunting narratives. Join us as we uncover the secrets behind the mysterious intruder, where a family's sense of safety is shattered when an unexpected visitor makes their way into their home. It was a day filled with excitement as my friend came to pick me up from my house. We were in a rush, running late for a hockey game in the city. Throughout the car ride, we were engrossed in laughter and conversation, oblivious to the fact that I had left my phone behind. It wasn't until later that I realized its absence. Frantically, I searched the car seat and the floor, hoping to find my phone. But it was nowhere to be seen. I convinced myself that I must have forgotten it at home, likely during the chaos of preparing for the hockey game. The worry nodded me, fearing that I might have dropped it somewhere along the way. Borrowing my friend's phone, I hurried to the nearest bathroom. Dialing my own number, I anxiously awaited someone at my house to pick up. After three rings, someone finally answered, but they remained eerily silent on the other end. Desperately, I shouted into the phone, explaining that I was just checking if I had left my phone at home. No response. Assuming it was my mischievous little brother playing a prank, I hung up. Late that night, I arrived home to find my parents absent. Concerned, I called them to inquire about their whereabouts. They informed me that they had gone out for dinner and to attend a concert at the park with my little brother. They had left soon after I had departed for the game and expected to be home within half an hour. Perplexed, I ended the call and resumed my search for my missing phone. Suddenly, it dawned on me, how could a family member have picked up my phone when they hadn't been home? A wave of unease washed over me, causing a knot to form in my stomach. It was at that very moment that I heard the distinct sound of the back door to my house opening and closing. Without hesitation, I bolted out of the front door, seeking refuge at the neighbor's house. Trembling, I dialed the emergency number and informed the police of the situation. As it turned out, the back door had been left unlocked, allowing an intruder to casually walk into our home. Miraculously, nothing had been stolen, but the chilling realization hit me, the thought that we could have unknowingly fallen asleep with a stranger inside our house. In the days that followed, our family implemented stricter security measures, ensuring that our home remained safe. The incident served as a stark reminder of the vulnerability we face and the importance of vigilance in protecting our personal space. The memory of that unsettling night lingered, forever etching in our minds the unnerving encounter with the mysterious intruder. Then, buckle up for the mysterious SUV, a tale filled with surveillance and paranoia, as a white SUV becomes an ever-present, unexplained presence in someone's life. Once upon a time, when I was around 11 years old, my older sister, who was 7 years older than me, would often babysit me while our parents were away. She had a habit of smoking, and since our parents insisted she smoke outside, I would often tag along, playing and occasionally annoying her. However, one day, something peculiar caught our attention. My sister noticed a white SUV with a bike rack on top parked at the end of our driveway. Its heavily tinted windows made it impossible to see inside from the side. Curiously, it remained there until she went back inside, only to drive to the nearby church parking lot and wait until she came out again for another smoke. This strange routine repeated itself over the next few days. Despite the oddity, my brave sister chose to ignore it. However, the situation took a more unnerving turn the following day. Our parents were once again away, and the SUV returned, 
stationed at the end of the driveway, intently watching my sister. I knew this because if I didn't join her outside, I would observe the SUV's persistent presence from the front window. Concerned, my sister informed our father, who happened to be a sheriff's deputy at the time. He promptly reported the incident to the police, and they came to investigate. Unfortunately, by the time they arrived, the SUV had vanished into thin air. Months went by without any sign of it, and we began to hope that the ordeal was over. However, around nine months after the initial encounters, and approximately four months since the last sighting, the SUV resurfaced. It became a regular occurrence, and my sister's nerves were wearing thin. One day, while we were home alone as usual, she decided she had had enough. In a bold move, she instructed me to stay in the carport while she confronted the mysterious SUV. As she approached the vehicle, halfway down the driveway, she suddenly felt an overwhelming sense of dread. It was as if her instincts were screaming at her to turn back. Paralyzed by fear, she swiftly retreated to the safety of our home. The SUV remained a constant presence, lurking just outside our sanctuary. One fateful evening, our family car was in the repair shop, leaving us all confined to our house. With our parents at home, my sister went outside to indulge in her unpleasant habit, and I accompanied her. It wasn't long before the SUV made its ominous return. Sensing danger, my sister instructed me to run inside and inform our father. I dashed inside and relayed the situation to our dad. Reacting swiftly, he retrieved his gun and set off down the driveway, keeping it at his side but not directly pointing it at the vehicle. Seemingly aware of his determined stride, the SUV accelerated down the road, skidding onto the nearby highway. Being a police officer, my father took note of the SUV's details, including the year, model, and distinguishing features. To our horror, we discovered that the license plate had been meticulously covered in duct tape. After that night, the SUV vanished without a trace. We never saw it again. I was left with a vivid memory of those unsettling encounters, even at the tender age of four. The mystery surrounding the white SUV with its tinted windows and concealed license plate remains etched in our family's collective memory, forever reminding us of the inexplicable and spine-chilling events that unfolded during those months. Get ready to shiver with the unseen tenant. A nightmarish encounter, a spine-chilling account of a presence lurking within the walls of an unsuspecting victim's apartment. This tale was relayed to me by a close friend of mine, a young woman we'll refer to as Minji. In her early 20s, Minji worked diligently as an English tutor in bustling South Korea. It was during a late-night tutoring session a year or so ago that she experienced a chilling event, forever etched in her memory. As the evening wore on, Minji found herself tutoring a high school boy. The hours slipped away, and the buses ceased their operations, leaving the boy stranded far from his home. Faced with the dilemma of transportation, the boy hesitantly asked if he could spend the night at Minji's one-room apartment, catching the first bus in the morning. Uncertain and wary, Minji grappled with the decision, aware of the potential risks. However, the boy's plea became increasingly desperate, tugging at her sympathetic heartstrings until she relented, allowing him to seek refuge within the confines of her small abode. They returned to her apartment, the weariness evident on their faces. Minji settled into her bed, while the boy laid a blanket upon the floor, making his makeshift bed for the night. Sleep enveloped them both, a temporary respite from the demands of their day. In the midst of the night, the clock ticking past 2 a.m., the boy abruptly roused Minji from her slumber. Startled and bewildered, she gazed up at him, confusion etched across her face. His words hung in the air, slicing through the silence, I'm really hungry. Let's go get some food. The proposition was met with disbelief. Food? At this ungodly hour? 
Minji urged him to return to bed, dismissing his request. Yet, the boy persisted, his hunger insatiable, pushing her to relent. Reluctantly, they ventured out of the apartment into the darkness. As they treaded the nocturnal streets, Minji's skepticism lingered, questioning the boy's late-night craving. It was then, amidst their journey, that the boy turned to her, his words dripping with a bone-chilling revelation. I'm not hungry. I woke up in the middle of the night and looked under your bed. There's a man sleeping there. Shock and fear gripped Minji's heart, freezing her in her tracks panic consumed her as the realization sank in. Without delay, the authorities were summoned, and a swift investigation commenced. To their astonishment, it was unveiled that an unknown intruder, a homeless man, had stealthily taken up residence in Minji's apartment. For two long months, he had remained hidden beneath her bed, an unseen tenant in the shadows. The boy, lying on the floor that fateful night, had inadvertently caught sight of the intruder, his vantage point offering a clear view beneath the bed, an unthinkable revelation that sent shivers down their spines. The intrusion violated the sanctuary of Minji's home, leaving her scarred by the chilling knowledge that a stranger had shared her space unbeknownst to her. The incident forever altered her sense of security, casting a shadow of doubt upon the familiar corners of her dwelling. As the echoes of the unsettling experience reverberated within her, Minji's cautionary tale serves as a chilling reminder of the unseen dangers that can lurk beneath the surface, hidden in the most unsuspecting places. And finally, be prepared to listen closely to the whispers in the night as we dive into whispers in the night, a haunting in the apartment where inexplicable events unfold, leaving occupants gripped by fear. At the tender age of five, I found myself caught in the aftermath of my parents' separation. My mother had settled into a modest two-bedroom apartment, and although I had a room of my own, I often sought comfort in sleeping beside her. Our bedrooms stood opposite each other at the end of a dimly lit hallway, on the apartment's ground floor. The sweltering summer air seeped in through the open window behind my mother's bed, casting an eerie glow over our restless nights. One fateful night, I awoke in a daze, my senses sharpening as I sat up in bed. A peculiar sight greeted my eyes. Our usually faithful cat perched in the doorway of my mother's room, peering into mine. The door stood ajar, granting a glimpse of my slumbering domain. It struck me as odd, for our feline companion rarely ventured far from our protected embrace. As I watched intently, the cat cautiously tiptoed into my room, emitting a soft, questioning meow. Startled, I turned towards my mother, my small voice urgently awakening her from her sleep. Within mere seconds, we both redirected our attention to the doorframe, our hearts skipping a beat. There, standing by my open door, was a figure, a man stealthily making his way out of my bedroom. Panic seized us, but my mother's instincts kicked into overdrive. In an astonishing display of courage and strength, she scooped me up and hurled me through the window screen. Without hesitation, she followed suit, and together we cried out for help, the urgency reaching the ears of a concerned neighbor who promptly dialed 911. The arrival of the police brought a temporary solace, but their investigation uncovered no signs of forced entry. Puzzlingly, they discovered that our front door, believed to have been locked securely with a deadbolt and chain, was inexplicably unlocked. The unsettling truth emerged, the intruder must have departed through that very entrance, leaving behind a chilling sense of violation. Days turned into a week, and while the incident lingered in our minds, life pushed forward. It was during a routine cleaning session in the kitchen that my mother stumbled upon an unexpected trove of evidence. Nestled within the water heater closet lay a forgotten notebook, filled with cryptic names and eerie drawings. Accompanying it were a pair of gloves, tinged with a sense of malevolence, and crumpled gum wrappers, a silent reminder of a trespasser's presence. The police were summoned once more, but their efforts remained speculative. 
It appeared that the intruder had lurked within the confines of our sanctuary, biding their time until we succumbed to slumber. The apartment held its secrets, concealing the unsolved mystery that had invaded our lives. Life continued its course, and I found myself facing another chilling encounter within the confines of our basement. Engrossed in my laundry duties, a sudden darkness shrouded the room as a light bulb fizzled out. Fear gripped my heart, for the basement was divided by a wall separating the laundry area from the rest of the dimly lit expanse. To ascend the stairs, I had to venture through the ominous shadows. With trepidation coursing through my veins, I pressed on, determined to complete my task. Step by cautious step, I traversed the abyss, my senses on high alert. Then, piercing the silence, an otherworldly cackle erupted behind me. It echoed with a blend of the macabre and the aged, as if a witch, her voice tarnished by decades of smoking, had come to life. The bone. Chilling sound reverberated through the air, shaking me to my very core. Fear transformed into instinct, and without a moment's hesitation, I sprinted towards the sanctuary of the stairs. My pulse raced, and my breath came in frantic gasps as I bounded up the steps, desperate to leave the darkness behind. It was only when my father returned home, the weight of his presence providing a sense of security that I dared to venture back into the basement. Changing the bulb under his watchful gaze, I silently vowed to keep the haunting cackle to myself, a secret harbor within the walls of our home. To this day, the memory of that haunting night remains etched in my mind, a reminder of the unseen terrors that can infiltrate our lives. The apartment became a fortress of both resilience and fear, where shadows danced in the corners and whispered secrets hid within its depths. Our journey continued, scarred but unbroken, as we navigated the uncertain path that lay ahead, forever watchful for the darkness that lurked within the shadows. Prepare for the silent call, an unsettling homecoming as we unravel the unnerving story of a phone call that leaves one person questioning the safety of their own home. As the anticipation for the hockey game pulsed through my veins, my friend pulled up in his car outside my house. Time was of the essence, and we were already running late for the match in the bustling city. Oblivious to the impending unease, we embarked on the journey, laughter filling the air as we relished the camaraderie. Little did I know that this seemingly ordinary outing would soon take a chilling turn. Amidst the lively banter and spirited conversation during the car ride, it dawned on me, I couldn't find my phone. Panic gripped me as I frantically searched the car seat and the floor, realizing that it had been left behind. Perhaps the excitement had momentarily overshadowed the realization of its absence. The worry of misplacing it or accidentally dropping it gnawed at my thoughts. Determined to alleviate my concern, I borrowed my friend's phone and hurriedly made my way to the nearest bathroom. Within the confines of the restroom, I dialed my number, hoping fervently that someone at home would answer. The phone rang three times, each ring amplifying the unease building within me. Finally, a connection was established, but silence greeted me from the other end of the line. Frustration mingled with confusion as I yelled into the phone, checking if I had left my phone at home. No response came. I brushed it off, assuming it was merely my mischievous little brother playing a prank. I ended the call and rushed back to rejoin my friend. Late into the night, I arrived home, only to find my parents absent. Concerned, I dialed their number, seeking an explanation for their absence. They informed me that they had gone out to enjoy an evening of dining in a concert at the park with my little brother. They assured me they had left soon after I had departed for the game and would return within half an hour. I hung up, momentarily relieved but still plagued by the mystery of my missing phone. As I embarked on the search for my device, a disconcerting realization hit me. How could someone from my family have answered my call when they hadn't been home? A knot tightened in my stomach as fear clawed its way into my consciousness. It was in that very moment that the sound of the back door to my house opening and closing reached my ears. 
Without a moment's hesitation, a surge of adrenaline propelled me out of the front door and toward my neighbor's house. The phone clutched tightly in my hand. I dialed the emergency number, my voice trembling as I relayed the unnerving events. It was revealed that the back door to my house had been left unlocked, allowing an intruder to nonchalantly invade my sanctuary. No belongings were stolen, but the chilling realization lingered. Had we unwittingly fallen asleep in the presence of a stranger, the implications of which sent shivers down my spine. The incident served as a haunting reminder of the importance of home security and vigilance. It etched within me a newfound awareness, a realization that even in the familiarity of our abode, unseen threats may lurk. I in the house a while back there was a 